What's going on guys, Nico here, and in this video, I'm gonna be showing you the fastest and easiest way to build chord progressions. Now, the way I build chord progressions is using the one tool known as the chord lineup. So by the end of this video, you'll be able to use the chord lineup and create unique chord progressions that you normally wouldn't have come up with before. So make sure you watch all the way until the end of this video. I promise you it will be worth it. And with that being said, let's get to work. I wanna quickly announce that I'm giving away a free piano lesson. So if you're interested in working with me for free, one-on-one, -on -one, comment down below, Piano Mastery. Every Friday, I'm choosing one person from the comments group to get this free piano lesson. And additionally, check out the free MIDI packs in the descriptions. A lot of producers have been using these in their productions and it's great to see. Check those out down below if you are a music producer. Now, with that being said, let's get on the piano here and jump into the chord lineup so I can show you guys how to make these chord progressions. All right, so when we look at the piano, the first thing I want you guys to notice is that there are 12 notes that we can use to do everything. And the 12 notes are right here. I've highlighted them. And these notes repeat over and over again, going up and down the piano. Now, each one of these notes has a distinct set, set of seven notes. And I call the 12 notes, each one has their own music family. So the key of C, for example, C has a, a series of seven notes that are used to construct chords and melodies, and we are assuming that we're playing in the key of C major. And something I also wanna mention is that all these seven, seven notes are also in the key of A minor. So when we look and we label these notes, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, the six right here is known as the relative minor. And when back in the day they were creating scales and creating you know, basically this piano and making it sound good, what was concluded was that if you played up all the white keys starting at A, it has sad tone to it. Versus if you start at C, it has a happy tone to it. But if you realize it's all the same notes, so you're using all the same notes in the key of A minor as well as C major. Now there are some exceptions when you get into the more complicated harmonic scales and stuff like that. But for what we're doing here and for chord progression creation, we don't need to, you know, go into that of that detail. That's really advanced stuff. That's stuff that, you know, even most successful artists don't even know how to do and it's not necessary. So, and I'm only trying to give you guys what actually matters in this situation. So with all these seven notes in mind and, you know, it can go up and down. We're just using the white keys for now. What happens is each one of these notes has a unique chord in whatever key that it's in. So if we're playing in the key of C major and we play the one chord, this one chord is known as a major chord. Now you may say, well, why is this the way it is? Well, if you think about what a piano is, when I hit one of these notes and I'm playing on a keyboard, if I'm playing on my grand piano, it strikes a string. There's like a system in place that when I hit this, it strikes a string and it makes a noise. Now this noise is happening at a, a certain frequency level. We have low frequencies and we have high frequencies, right? So when you combine a certain set of frequencies together, it's gonna sound good or it's gonna sound bad. Like if I play down here, combining a bunch of low frequencies together and it doesn't sound good. So whoever came up with the piano and came up with all this music theory and there was a lot of people involved decided that, all right, if I'm playing a key of C, the first note is gonna be known as the tonic and we don't need to get into that. When I play a chord, it's combining frequencies that sound good together so that we can make music. Now we have our happy chords and our sad chords and I'm keeping this so simple at a third grade vocab level so that you guys can all understand it. Point is the second chord in the key of C major using the D, is gonna be a D minor chord. Now, if you'll notice, I have written up here, the one chord, two chord, three chord, etc. When we call chords major chords, we can use Roman numeral analysis. And that, that may sound complicated, but the purpose of it is so that if we know we're playing the one chord, we have the one symbol that will show up. And with this one symbol showing up, the reason why we're doing it is because let's say we're playing in the key of C, right? What if we're working with a vocalist that normally sings in the key of E flat? or some other key. Well, unless we have an auto transposer on our keyboard, we're gonna have to jump around and potentially play the black keys, right? But, you know, a lot of you guys use different Ableton and Logic where you can change stuff up. What I'm trying to make here is that we need something to standardize these chord progressions across all the tw 12 music families, across all the 12 keys, right? Because when you see your circle of fifths, there's 12. There's 12 different sections of it. So what the Roman numeral analysis is helping us do is it standardizing the process so whatever key we're playing in, we can transpose it much more easily. Now, with that being said, the first chord is gonna be an a, uh, a, a C major chord. 
The second chord is going to be a D minor chord. The third chord in the key of C major is going to be an E minor chord. Then we have an F major chord, a G major chord, an A minor chord for that sixth chord, and then we have a diminished chord. Now, these are, this is the chord lineup, and you line up these chords. Essentially, what you can do is you can mix and match these chords together, combine them, and try to come up with unique chord progressions, or just come up with regular chord progressions. Like, I can be like, okay. And we can sit here and play around for a couple minutes to figure out chord progressions. Now, what happens is, let's say I put this chord progression together. F, C, a minor. So this chord progression will be denoted as the four chord, the five chord, and the six chord. So we'll have IV, V, and then VI, and the VI will be in lowercase because it's minor, and then the other notes, the other you know Roman numerals will be capitalized because they are major. Now the one thing I want to say is that a diminished chord has a little circle. It's it's in my it's in a lowercase and it has a little circle at the top. Now this is the chord lineup playing in the key of C major. Now, what if someone says, well, Nico, we need to play in the key of A minor. Well, we know that A minor and C major have the same notes, so it actually doesn't matter. Now, some music theorists will complicate things further and say, play the three chord in the key of A minor. Now, the C major scale is like this, right? It just goes one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, and then repeats and repeats and repeats all the way up. And the only reason why it's considered the C major scale is because we're starting with a C and it sounds happy. Now, as I said earlier, if we play the A minor scale, it sounds sad. But this is the first note in the key of A minor technically. But like I said, for our songwriting purposes, it's all the same notes. So if we're playing the one chord in A minor, it's that. If we're playing the six chord in C major, it's still the same thing. So it really comes down to notation. So the reason why I'm explaining this to you is some people may try to confuse you and they're out to get you and they're going to say, play the four chord in the key of D minor or play this chord in the key of this. Now, the way I do everything with all my MIDI packs and everything else like that is I always put things assuming we're playing in the key of the major. So I always use the one chord is going to be the major, the two chord is going to be minor, the three chord is going to be here, and then we just go up our chord lineup and the chord lineup repeats over and over and over and over again. And again, let's say I start here. It's the same chords, guys. So the way, if you really want to transpose this, I suggest you write everything down and say, okay, I'm going to write down these seven chords. I'm going to write down the normal numerals, and then I can transpose between different keys. So let's say I have a C major chord, uh, and I want to transpose all my chord progression to G major. Well... I'm going to write out all the notes to G major. So it's going to be like, okay, these are the notes. I know there's one sharp because I've watched a circle of fifths video. And then from there, I'm going to be like, okay, the first, I have these seven notes and I'm going to construct all the chords. And again, if you need help with chord construction, check out the piano cheat codes PDF where I give you guys all the chord strategies. You can find it in the description. Anyway, the chord lineup in the key of G major. Well, the first note's a G. So I have to make a G major chord. I know the second chord is an A minor. And then I go up and up and up and I create the chord lineup for that. And then once I have these notes, all I have to do is mess around with my hands. So instead of drawing in notes into your DAW, this is another way that you can creatively, you know, a new way that you can create chord progressions. And there's some actions that will happen. Sometimes you'll hit a note like that by accident. You're, you're trying to go for a G major chord and you hit that and you're like, oh, that's a nice sounding chord, right? So really all this chord lineup is, is playing together a combination of notes that have certain frequencies that sound good together. So now that you have the chord lineup, you should be able to come up with chord progressions in a fast and effective way. It shouldn't take you much time because you know, well, if I'm playing in the key of C major, A minor, same thing, I have these chords. Now, I have other videos on the chord lineup where I tell you how to take these regular chords, because all we're playing here are block chords. It's a simple triad. It's a one, three, and five. In other videos, I'm going to show you how to create chord lineups that have a jazzy tone to them, 
chord lineups that have a beautiful tone to them. This is why the chord lineup is so important to understand. Right? So the chord lineup originally, the chord I'm playing is the first chord C, F, and then G. And then I'm using something that I call a cluster chord that I talk about in other videos. Right, so we could really take this chord lineup and make any chord progression that we want out of it. And again, guys, I have a bunch of MIDI packs that you guys can download and check out the chord progressions. They're all written in you know the, the key that it's in and then Roman numeral analysis. And the Roman numeral analysis will allow you to transpose the key to a different key and know what chord progression you're using. And the Roman numeral analysis I use, I always assume that we're in the minor. So if I have the number one there, it's gonna be the first chord, it's gonna be a major chord. So just to summarize quickly, now you understand how to create chord progressions a very fast, easy, and effective way using the chord lineup. And if you need to jump around to different keys, you understand Roman numeral analysis and how it's gonna work. So what this will translate is you're gonna become a much better songwriter because you have a tool now to create chord progressions. A lot of times people just try to come up with progressions, they download MIDI packs, but they don't conceptually understand how it works. But with the chord lineup, this tool that we're giving you, you're gonna be able to make chord progressions. And with that being said, that concludes this video. I hope you found some value out of it. If you did, like, comment, subscribe down below, turn on the notifications bell so that you get updates with any videos I come out with. And with all that being said, again, I hope you enjoyed this video, got something out of it, and I will see you next time.